Hi, I'm Chef Ian Bromstead, and welcome to Regal Fair, where I'll show you how to make simple and elegant meals just like we do at some of the finest restaurants in this country. Today, we're gonna make a simple preserve of tomato, which we're gonna poach an egg in and lay atop a piece of grilled bread. Then we're gonna piece, make a piece of roasted sea bass with a pickled melon and summer bean salad. Then we're gonna make a brioche pudding with golden raisins and almonds, and we can get started right away with making our bread pudding. So I'm going to take some brown sugar, and we're gonna make the filling for our bread pudding. I'm gonna take about a third of a cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna mix in about a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then I'm, to this I'm gonna add about, about a third of a cup of toasted almonds. So we can just mix all these together just to combine. And this will be the filling for a brioche. We're gonna have two separate layers of the brioche and we're gonna create a little filling right in between them. So now that this is all mixed together, we can start making our Royale. So to make our Royale, I'm gonna crack four eggs into this bowl. And we're going to add two cups of milk. And I'm gonna add one vanilla bean and a little bit of vanilla extract. We have all of our eggs. I'm gonna just gently whisk these eggs just to break them up. Then we can add our two cups of milk. And we can add our teaspoon of vanilla extract. We're just gonna add a little pinch of salt to this. And I'll also take one of these vanilla beans. And I'm gonna split this lengthwise. And I'm gonna scrape the seeds out and put it right into the pudding. So if you take all of your vanilla beans and you get them all scraped out, we can get them right into the Royale here. Set these aside. And we can whisk all this together. Just whisk all this to combine. I want to make, the, make sure that we whisk it a little bit, enough to break up the vanilla seeds. So now that we have our Royale made, we can go ahead and add it right to this big, big pan. Now I've pre-cut some pieces of brioche here that fit nicely into this, into this loaf pan. And we can go ahead and get these right in here. Ideally, the longer we soak them, the better. Just until most of that is absorbed. We can take and turn. Take and turn this guy. And this first guy should be ready. So we can take this, place it right into our baking mold. Now we're gonna add a layer of our brown sugar, cinnamon, and almond mix. And then we can add a layer of golden raisins. And we can put our other piece of brioche on. And we can lay this guy right on top. Now that we have all of the bread inside the mold, pack it down so that all the almonds and raisins get nice and squished into the brioche. And we can go ahead and lay the last of our filling on top. So we can just take this and layer it pretty liberally all over the top. Now when we slice this, we'll have a nice Nice mosaic of the different layers of brioche with the filling inside. So it'll be a nice, nice layered bread pudding. Now I'm going to pop this guy into a 375 degree oven for about 40 minutes. I'm going to get cleaned up and we'll come right back and make our tomato and egg. So we're back and we can go ahead and start right away by making our tomato and egg. So the first thing that we're going to do to start that is we're going to start a little bit of tomato preserves. So the way in which I like to start my tomato preserves is I like to start with a little bit of cold extra virgin olive oil. 
And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna saute a little bit of this raw garlic, raw shaved garlic. So we just wanna get the garlic to cook in the oil and that way that garlic will infuse in the olive oil and then the entire sauce will have that delicious roasted garlic flavor. Cook this nice and gently. We don't really wanna get any color on the garlic. We just wanna cook it slowly, just nice and gently. Let that garlic flavor really infuse into the olive oil. And that way, that way when we go to saute our tomatoes, all that olive oil that we're frying our tomatoes in is nice and garlicky. Just nice and gentle, nice and gentle. So now all of our garlic is frying. So we can go ahead and add a little bit of Calabrian chili, just a little. So now we want to also let that chili powder fry in the olive oil. So we just want to toast the garlic just slightly, just enough to infuse all the olive oil with a delicious garlic flavor. So now that our garlic is just about to start to get some color, we can go ahead and add our raw crushed San Marzano tomatoes. I just juiced, I just took all, I separated all the juice from the tomatoes and I just crushed them with my hands. So we can just keep frying these tomatoes. The idea is that you want to fry the tomatoes in olive oil rather than make a tomato soup, soup sauce. So we can go ahead and we can let these cook for just a few moments. Now that we have the tomato in there, we don't have to worry about the garlic burning, so we can just let this cook. So while, so while our tomatoes are frying, we can go ahead and we can fry our piece of bread. So in just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I have a little piece of the pan francese, the pan de avignons, pan francese, delicious country white bread. And just fry that in there. Just make sure that these tomatoes aren't sticking at all. Just want to fry nicely. So we can add a little bit of cracked black pepper. We can add a little bit of salt. and slow down our bread. See it's already getting a little bit of color. And these preserves are coming along very nicely. We're not getting too much liquid in there. We're really frying the tomatoes. That's really gonna make a delicious tomato flavor. Turn this guy over. Now that we're almost there with these tomatoes, we need to start to slow this down so a nice, gentle simmer. And now we can add our egg. And pull our bread out. And now that our tomatoes are just about there, nice and fried, still remaining intact. So we're just gonna create just a little well here in the center of the tomato sauce, just to put set our egg yolk into. We have a nice little well here. We're just going to drop this egg yolk right in and just let that poach. So this won't need very long, just enough to gently cook the egg yolk. So we're just about there. So now that we're there, you can go ahead and take some of these tomato preserves and you can just spoon this right over the bread. And I want to create another little well for the egg yolk to sit as soon as it goes down. Just a nice little layer of tomatoes. Now that we have a nice little layer of tomatoes, go ahead here. Plop that right down on top of the tomato. So now that we have that plated, we can take some of this Parmesan. I like a little Parmesan with my tomato and egg. And we're gonna to wanna to peel some nice big slices. Nice big long slices to lay over top. So we can just drape these guys right around.
Now I have a little bit of basil that we're going to add. And I really like this just to be raw. I've gone ahead and picked out all the small leaves. And I'm just going to arrange these around just nice and gently. So just a little bit more extra virgin olive oil. A little bit of our coarsely ground Malden salt right on the yolk. Just a little bit more fresh ground pepper. And then I have these beautiful little viola flowers. I got these from Lonnie Farms. I think it's really going to set the color scheme off here. So we now have our completed tomato and egg. Now this dish is a very classic dish. This comes from uh, northern Italy, made famous by Marco Canora at Hearth Restaurant in Lower East Side. And it's a really excellent summertime dish. The basil really goes well with the tomatoes. And the cheese really brings it to a whole new level. It really brings a delicious saltiness to this dish. So here we have our tomato and egg. We're going to get this cleaned up, and we'll come right back with our sea bass. So we're back and we're going to go ahead and we're going to start making our sea bass. So to begin our sea bass, we're going to start with a little bit of pickling liquid. So what we're going to do to start that is we're going to get a little bit of peppercorns in here. We're going to get a little bit of raw garlic. We're going to get a little bit of chili powder. We're going to move these around just to toast the spices a little bit. We're going to get a couple bay leaves in here. And we're going to add a quarter cup of white wine vinegar. We're going to let this come up to a boil. We're going to add about two tablespoons of sugar. And we're going to add about three tablespoons of salt. So we're just going to let this come up to a full boil, just to let the spices infuse into the vinegar and let all the sugar and the salt dissolve. So next, we can go ahead and we can start our corn puree. So to start our corn puree, I'm going to take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, right in here, and we're going to start sweating these white onions. So we just want to sweat these onions nice and gently just until they're translucent. You can add a little bit of salt to the onions. That helps break down the onions. It actually helps release some of their moisture. Helps them keep from getting color. So we'll keep cooking these. Our pickling liquid is almost ready. Almost to a boil. We just keep cooking this. Now that our onion is almost there, we can go ahead and add just a little bit of shaved raw garlic to the onion. We can just let this keep cooking. So now that our pickling liquid has come up to a full boil, I'm going to pull this off. Just let all those spices steep in there. So we're cooking here. Our onions are almost ready. They're almost translucent. Just another few moments here. I want to avoid getting any color on the onions because what will end up happening is our, it'll give a little dark color to our corn puree. Almost ready here. So I have some ice here. So what we're going to do with this is we're actually going to strain all these spices Right into, right into here, and we're going to make a little pickling liquid. What the uh, ice does is it just brings the uh, pickling liquid down to, to room temperature so that when we pour them over our melon, the melon won't get overcooked. So we can put, set this aside. Put a little, little color on our garlic. It's okay. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some corn here. Just maybe, maybe a cup of corn. We're going to stir this around. We're going to add just a little bit of water. Just enough to cover it. So we can let our corn puree cook. And we can get a few of these items out of the way here. So now, now that our corn puree is almost ready, we can go ahead and we can start cooking our sea bass. 
So I'm going to season our sea bass pretty liberally with kosher salt, both sides. A little bit of kosher salt. And just on the flesh side, we're going to have just a little bit of cracked black pepper. So we can add the sea bass to a generous amount of extra virgin olive oil, right, in a preheated pan. And just let the skin start crisping up on that. So here in this pan, we're going to take just a nice little tablespoon and a half of our cultured butter from the Vermont Creamery. And we're just going to slowly brown this. It's going to add a really nice nutty flavor that's going to work really well with all the sweetness of the berries and the, and the melon. So our corn puree is cooking. We're going to add just a little more water. Almost ready on the corn puree. Our bass is cooking. Our butter is browning. Our pickling liquid is ready. Now that this is nice and cold, we can go ahead and add some of this pickling liquid right over the melon. We'll have a nice, tart, sweet, pickled melon here to, to bring a little sweetness and acidity to our dish. So our corn puree is just about ready here. Our butter is almost brown. We'll let this go for just another 10 seconds. And that's just about ready. I'm going to just press a little bit lightly on the flesh of the bass just to make sure that we get a nice surface contact with the fish. Make sure that all the skin is just touching the surface of the pan so that it all gets nice and crispy. Okay, now our brown butter is ready over here. So now we can come to the blender and we can add our corn puree. So we're just going to blend this just until it's nice and thick. Start on low. So this is now fully pureed. Now we can take this. And I like to pass this through a chinois, give it a really nice smooth creamy consistency. So get all of it out of the blender into the chinois and just get all this passed through the chinois and we have a nice thick creamy corn puree. So now that we have all this corn puree passed through, we have this nice little creamy corn puree in this pot. We're going to set this aside. Move this over to the heat. Now we're going to take this, we're going to add some of the raw corn kernels right to this. Make a nice little corn ragu. A little creamless cream corn puree. So just cook this for just a few moments and we have a beautiful corn ragu. So our corn ragu is cooking nicely, our sea bass is almost ready. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and see we have a nice crispy skin. So we can go ahead and start on our salad. So I'm going to add just some of these haricot vert and haricot jaune beans. I'm going to add some of these fresh fava beans. All these fava beans that I did to these fava beans was blanch them and peel them out of their husks. Same with the uh, green beans and the yellow beans. I just blanch them and split them. Uh, these are some fresh cranberry beans, these, these pink ones here. Um, I just blanched these in some salted water. I'm going to add a few of those to the salad. These are going to be a beautiful addition to the summer bean salad. And we can go ahead and take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. A little bit of cracked black pepper. A little bit of salt. And now we can take this pickled melon, we can add this right to the salad. And we can use actually just a little bit of this, a little bit of this pickling liquid to dress the salad also. Okay. So 
So we can go ahead and we can start plating our, our dish. So our salad is ready. So we can take a little bit of this corn ragu. We can put just a little bit right here. start arranging our salad ingredients. So we can just toss these beans to coat and we can just arrange them delicately on our plate. We have all the nice different beans, the pickled melon, the fava beans, really nice little summer corn and bean salad. Melon's going to bring a little acidity, a little sweetness from the pickling liquid. Pull this guy off. Just about ready. Add a few more beans. And we can start to put on some of these berries. So I have just some blueberries, some blackberries, and some raspberries. Again, this is going to add a really beautiful sweetness to this summer salad. And then we can take our wild striped sea bass, straight out of the pan, put it right on top of this corn ragu. We can arrange some of these little leaves. These are purslane. It's a beautiful little summer green. Grows pretty, pretty prevalently in the, in the Hudson Valley area. Nice little astringent flavor. I think it works really well with the beans. A couple more pieces. Then we can take we can take just a little bit of this brown butter. Just drizzle this right around. And here we have our roasted wild striped bass with corn ragu and summer bean salad. I'm going to get all this cleaned up. We'll come right back, plate our pudding, and present all our dishes. And we're back, and we're going to go ahead and slice our bread pudding. I've gone ahead and taken it out of the mold. I've given it a little bit of time to cool slightly. So we're just going to take a little bit of white sugar and we're just going to mix it with just a little bit of crumb fresh just to make a little topper for our just to make a little topper for our bread pudding. So I can go ahead and slice this bread pudding. Put a nice big thick slice right here in the plate. Um, we have our crumb fresh. I'm just going to put one little dollop right on top. And a little sprig of mint. And there's our bread pudding. So today we have our bread pudding with golden raisins and almonds. We have our wild striped bass with corn ragu and summer bean salad. And we have our tomato and egg with basil and parmesan. This has been another episode of Regal Fair. I'm Chef Ian Bromstead, and see you next time.